morning, YouTube. This is May the 2nd, and it's a nice, cool Saturday morning here. But it stopped raining. And I'd like to do the second in my series of Sweet Bomb blends. And today we shall be looking at Molte Dolce. This beautiful Sutliff blend, which many people have reviewed and many describe as a kind of sweet bomb. And rated actually very. Uh, very highly at uh, 3.2, so it's in the excellent class. Beautiful tin art, I think, so Italian-esque. And I'm playing some classical Italian music, of course. I have turned the volume down. Some of you said it was too loud in the last video. Sorry for that. getting used to my new replacement mic which um, does seem to pick up distant sounds or a little bit more distant almost better than it does my voice so I'm trying to compensate for that this is what it looks like that's a bit of a shock actually when you open the tin because you think either a, an olive oil oil slick has hit that or it's bits of dark plastic um, it certainly doesn't look like natural tobacco and that's I think what uh, a lot of people react to it and think this is probably very heavily uh, topped and sourced which it probably is. Oh, better introduce my cast today. Kitty Max Boone wanted me to use my brass armor deep engraved Zippo just for you, Kitty. And today, this is a pipe that I got done in uh, Kallenberg in Germany. It's a um, an artisan pipe maker and he had these lovely church wardens in 9mm and he will do a uh, an engraving if you like and that lion on this which I think he's done very well is the on the crest of my family flag of course so I'm rather pleased to have my family crest on one of my pipes marvellous and I do like the way he's done this lovely stone collar here which is beautiful I thought a church warden is also a little bit suited to um, aromatics because it's cooler of course I did um, dry this for a couple of hours but again it's quite cool and wet air so it hasn't dried out that much but I think uh, you have to give it a couple of lights when you start off char it and then another one maybe two or three even but once it's going it seems to go pretty good unless you uh, don't attend to it and of course it'll go out anyway so it is very moist and sticky it's very it's really you notice it on your fingers the stuff coming off there But to make up maybe for its appearance, um, the tin note, well I found it chocolate uh, cake and my wife also said it's very lovely, vanilla, she even thought there was a bit of, tiny bit of cherry in the background or something like that, red fruit. Um, and the smoke note, this is my fifth bowl, and uh, I can understand a lot of people who buy a tin, you get through it pretty quickly. It's going to be a good review for this one. Uh, so the smoke note is, 
she said absolutely delightful, sweet, and like a pastry shop. I mean, in Italy, you know, couldn't be better. So moisture, we talked about. It is, I think, very moist, rather hard to dry, um, very oily. I could say it's almost like an, a, a, a slick has hit it. Um, The leaf is uh, Black Cavendish Burley in Virginia. Now, I always love that kind of combination because I think it, it really gives the blender lots of chances to find the right balance. They say it's a ribbon cut. Uh, some sort of squarey chunks in there. But yeah. A bit of a, a rough ribbon cut, I suppose you could describe it as. And the, um, the topping, as it's described on paper, is caramel, honey, vanilla. It's uh, definitely a low nick. You know, you could two or three bowls of this, it wouldn't really phase you if you don't like too much nick as I don't. Now when you light it, especially if you haven't really been able to dry it very successfully, it does crackle like Rice Krispies, you remember those? Snap, crackle and pop. <laughs> but it's only short lived and after you've done the char it's almost over. Good amount of smoke, by the way, my tamper. Also a little bit Italian-esque ornate, I thought. No bite, you see plenty of smoke. Once it's going, you know. But I always find this damp weather tends to sort of s slow it up a bit. Maybe a shallow pad would be advisable here. I didn't put it in here, but um, because it is hard to drive the moisture out, and that would certainly help. But it doesn't burn hot. It's actually quite easily controlled and quite easily keep cool, even though its moisture and, and oiliness is there. very consistent with the flavour, very far down. Right at the end you start to pick up some of those Virginias and other flavours in it as the topping has exhausted itself, but really only at the end, I think. So what is the taste, you're all saying? Tell me about the taste. The taste. Well, There's a lot of beautiful, sweet um, nuances with this. Um, yes, there's the caramel, honey, and vanilla that they uh, tell you. Um, pina colada was one description, and there's some truth in that. There's something rich behind that vanilla, which is telling you there's more. In my mouth, it reminded me of an English custard tart. <laughs> no, I don't mean that kind of tart. It's actually a dessert cake in England full of custard in a, in a pastry and uh, I grew up with those, that was a beautiful treat and if you make the custard rich and bourbon like which I agree continentals do better um, in Italy or France for example or Switzerland uh, it can be absolutely delicious and that is one of the descriptions that comes through another one Another one is a crema catalan, which is, uh, if you go to Barcelona, have that dessert, is my all-time favorite. I, I love a creme brulee, which the French do brilliantly, and I love those, that sort of excellent plus plus. 
is a, a creme catalan, which is actually made differently than a creme brulee. It's got more egg in it and a touch of lemon. And this flavor is a bit more in the direction of a, a creme catalan, I thought. So there's a, there's a lovely complexity, I think, to the vanilla and the sweetness in this, as well as a lot of it. For me, this one does start to fulfill the sweet bomb, you know, goal that I was looking for. One of the disadvantages of a church warden is you've got a long condensation path, so I have to rethink that if I've got a blend that I know is, is under dried, um, might not be the best, even though it's an aromatic. Good news is, also, if you've got a tongue bite problem, these longer church warden stems will help you with that. So, absolutely no bite, even if you try. I don't think you can, you can get it there. Probably because it won't smoke that fast, being moist and heavily topped. Try and think, what is this one like? Well, I, again, I've not got enough experience with things as sweet as this, apart from the ones I've tried. And yes, there's, uh, you know, it's cupcake and then plus plus on the complexity of the flavor, the sweetness, and there's more of it. So it certainly moves up a league. Although cupcake was just about excellent, I thought, and this one is really solidly an excellent class of, of sweet bombs. Some people said Trout Stream, you know, reminded them of that, or Pennington Gap, or um, Irish Blessing from Cornell and Deal, which I've ordered some. <laughs> I haven't tried it yet, so the sweetest blends that are out there will only be comparable to this one. Now I would drink coffee with this, uh, I've had three cups for breakfast so I'm putting the brakes on a bit at the moment, but coffee, um, and if you had it in the e evening you could have it um, again instead of dessert or as, as an after dinner uh, blend, you could then have something like Frangelica with it, which is a lovely uh, hazelnut liqueur, for example, or something like that. Or Kahlua, if you like coffee liqueur. If you would be worried about um, ghosting, you again, Cobb or Meerschaum, but as I said, I smoke so many aromatics, and if a bit of sweetness of one comes in the next one, you know, it doesn't really bother me. I've I just don't think I'm a ghostable person, you know, however fearsome the blend is, but uh, I'm sure some would recommend not to smoke this in a briar. It doesn't taste to me at all chemically, but that's just my tongue. There was actually some diversity of reviews, even though it got a 3.2 in tobacco reviews, um, but there were some one and two stars who said, oh, you know, can't, can't smoke this at all, but I think that's just how it is. We've all got different taste buds, and uh, one man's meat is another man's poison. I leave it like that. I'm not saying either of those reviews, there's no such thing as wrong, because in, for that person it was like that. So, But obviously the majority of people were much more on the positive side that dragged the score up to 3.2. But do have a look at some of the reviews out there. Um, 
and there's there's actually a lot on this blend. Um, Gentleman's Corner did one about ten months ago. Um, Angela's brand new bag. I love that lady and that name. It's fantastic. I don't know if she's still doing videos. I think she's had a little break, but um, six years ago she did one on it. Um, Poker Pipe did one uh, a year ago on it. Um, Joel W did one six years ago. Uh, Pipes. Bikes and Cigars did one two years ago. And Tween, uh, I think it's T Not Two, something like that, did one six years ago. But generally, most of them are very positive. Now the guy at Sutliff who actually did this blending is a guy called Carl McAllister and um, I think the big achievement for, for me here is firstly he's used the, the right tobaccos for me, the ideal mix of Black Cavendish, Burley and Virginia and he's, um, he's got the vanilla nuance to a T, I mean A lot of vanilla tobaccos, you're kind of saying, yeah, a lot of sweetness, some vanilla, you know, some sort of vanilla, you know, a very generic. It's actually hard to find one that actually that goes beyond that and you're starting to think of these lovely pastry uh, dessert and all, all these words that add dimension and complexity like caramel and honey and... Um, molasses and pina colada, as somebody said. And as soon as somebody says that to you, you think, mm, yeah, it's a bit like that. A bit, there's, you know, a hint of that, more than a hint of that pina colada in it. Some people think there isn't a liqueur topping in this, not actually officially mentioned, but um, I could believe it. It's almost like a hint of eggnog in it, somewhere. Now it's calmed down. I think a lot of the moisture has been driven off. It's just going along beautifully. End up with a sort of uh, a mixed uh, white and some dark specks in it, and ash, you know. But. Um, really burns down to the end. There's a bit of dottle, as you would expect, with a hev hev heavy uh, topping like that. So I would give it 3.6, which uh, barely a handful of blends that I've tried get in, into that uh, area. It has achieved its goal. It is a sweet bomb. I know Kitty Max Boone would agree with me on that, wouldn't you, my dear? <laughs> so it's one I definitely would keep a few tins in the cellar. I shall probably, as I near the end of this one, which will go quickly, order a couple of three tins to replace it. <laughs> I tried to look at this dark mass. I think it's mostly Berlian Black Cavendish. Quite a lot of Black Cavendish, I think. The very black uh, pieces. And not much Virginia. That's what I think is in this. So, absolutely suggest everyone try this if you like aromatics and if you like sweet. And the question is now, what's the next one?
Well, I'd like to try Eileen's Dream for the next review because I think it will be near to this one. Sixty percent way the, the, down the bowl and um, holding the flavour beautifully. So the consistency of it is is very good. You know. All right, my dears. Getting darker and darker, and I think it might uh, bring some more rain in here. And it's windy rain, so it drives it through the balcony. So I better clear out here. But if you like these videos. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up and um, if you're a first visitor, please subscribe and I'll do more of these and other things. So take care everyone, look after yourselves, bye bye.